G'day, it's Robbie again. Well, I've done it. I've bought another cheap generator. Um, <laughs> I seem to have this problem with cheap generators. Whenever I see them, I've got to buy them, and I do them up. I mean, none of them go when I get them. They're all non-goers. And uh, I do them up and sell them, and uh, I keep a couple. I've got a couple in the shed that I use um, for odd occasions. Mainly just around the garden, power the uh, electric hedge trimmer and things like that. So they're lightweight generators and they're, uh, they're all no bigger than 1 kVA. Anyway, previously I bought them and I've got them for like 20 bucks, but I've excelled myself with this one. It was $10, uh, two strike generator. They made a, a zillion of these things under different brand names. This one is Gen 850, which is about what they'd put out, 850 watts is around the mark and they might peak at a thousand maybe uh why is it so cheap well it's got the same problem that lots of these get finish up with and that is that the pull start mechanism is crapped out i had one before one of these and it was a good little machine and the pull start mechanism mechanism on that was crapped out as well and uh, the problem is i mean these are a total copy of a yamaha two-stroke um Generator, they're good little robust little unit, pretty dirty electricity out of them, but they're good enough for powering power tools and stuff like that. You can run lights, but they flicker around a bit. Um, so I just hope that the Yamaha pull start mechanism is better made than the ones in the Chinese ones because they all crap out. And what happens is the, the plastic pulley uh, is fairly narrow gutted and the rope tension spreads it and eventually cracks it and the other thing just jams up. Okay, you can take off the crappy one and buy another equally crappy one off eBay new, but what's the point? And the best thing is to do what I did on the last one, and that's just put a pulley on. So I'll show you how to go about it. Uh, once you've got a pulley on to rope start it, you'll never have a problem again. Okay, I'll show you what you do. The first thing we do is take off the fuel tank. There's just two bolts on each end of it, and uh, take them out, disconnect the... Uh, the fuel pipe on the carby and the tank top comes off. So next we take off the, uh, the fan housing uh, and the rope pull mechanism and we're going to cut the centre out of it. We're going to cut out this bit where the rope pull goes, the pulley would be. It's useless, you don't want it. It's, if you leave it there, you're gonna, the pulley's going to have to stick out way further. Serves no purpose, so we cut that out all together, quite easy. To do it, you'd have to take this off, four screws come out, four bolts, take it off, cut it out. When you finish, put it back on because uh, we don't need to do any more, work, any more work on that. The next thing we have to do is take the nut off, the ten, take the nut off the 10 mil crankshaft end. Um, the nut is actually 9 sixteenths, or 9 sixteenths socket will fit it. And as I said, the shaft is 10 mil. Okay, to do that, we have to stop the, uh, the crankshaft from turning. And to do that, a simple way, without buggering stuff up. Uh, I mean, I've seen people group them with bars on the fans and all this, that's the butcher's way. The proper way to do this is to get a, take the spark plug out, get a screwdriver, put it in, and turn the crankshaft until the piston is at the bottom of the stroke. You can see it go up and down, here it is at the top. Now we go down the bottom. Okay, when you get down the bottom, you get yourself some cord. This is what I call the Indian rope trick. It's not really. But basically, you fill up the, the barrel with cord. And basically, it won't hurt anything. Just stuff it in, get as much in there as, as you can. Get in there, little bugger. And that will basically stop the piston. It acts as a it acts as a piston stop. It will stop piston travel all the way up. The similar, it won't compress. You know, get to the uh, near the top of the stroke, and the piston won't be able to go over top dead centre because there's all this rope in the in the bore. This is an old two-stroke trick that's been around for a hundred years, and uh, you know, uh, you can get fancy piston stops and all this sort of stuff to do it, but this will work just as well. And it also works if the uh, spark plug is on an angle in the head, which it is on these. So, uh, otherwise piston stops aren't uh, any good in that situation. 
All right, put in as much as you can get in there. As I said, it won't do any harm. And uh, plug it in. Any old cord will do, as long as it's not going to fall apart. You don't want bits of fibre getting in the motor, so use something, you know, a nylon or something like that. Okay, that should be enough. Then you get your, uh, your bar. This is already loose, so it's going to come off easy, but basically, um, you can see I can only rotate that so far. And then you just put on your bar, and round she goes, and off she comes. Now, leave the rope in there because you're going to need the rope in there to tighten it up. And uh, the next thing you need to do is make up a pulley. So I'll show you the pulley, show you how it's made, give you the dimensions on the one I made up. Right, here's the pulley. And all of this is a bit of, bit of steel tubing with a, uh, a turned up metal end in it. Uh, I mean, you really want a little lathe to do this sort of job, a little Chinese lathe will do it no problem whatsoever. And uh, that fits, that's stepped and it fits into the uh, inside of the, uh, of the bit of tube. And then it's got four tack welds, four small welds in there to keep it together. You don't need a lot of welding in there, um, just stick weld it. If you go too mad with the welding, you might throw the whole thing out of balance. So just keep the welds down to four will be plenty, plenty strong enough. It won't come apart. And then we've just got a, a notch in there for the rope. We just file that in with a file or your die grinder. And you can see that the, um, the end is, is stepped so that it goes into that recess in the centre of the flywheel. So it basically will just sit in there like that. And you can see it clears these lugs. You could go a bigger diameter. This is uh, what is it? This is 50 mil, but you could go a little bit bigger before you'd hit hit those lugs. I just went with this. Uh, it's plenty good enough. And uh, of course, to hold it on, you can't use the original nut because uh, by the time you put this in and allow for the step, uh, there's not enough thread on the shaft. So you have to make up. A tube type, a tube type uh, nut. So it's basically just get a big old nut, a big old bolt which is bigger than uh, a lot bigger than 10 mil in the thread section. And just drill it through and tap a 10 mil thread in it, and then that just goes on, and that basically will pull the whole thing together. The uh, in this case I used I think it was a 24 mil metric bolt I had lying around, and I just uh, centre drilled it, tapped it. You only need to tap half the bottom half of it when you're screwing it on because the, the end bit won't do anything. Uh, piece of advice if you do, when you do this, if you do make it out of a bolt, I mean, you could make it out of some rod, you know, large diameter rod, and then weld the original nut on the end of it, or a nut, any nut you want. But if you're making it out of a bolt, make sure that you uh, anneal the bolt, in other words, heat it red hot and then let it slowly air cool, otherwise you'll find it could be so hard that you won't be able to tap a thread in it, okay? And you risk breaking your tap. So that's it. So the dimensions on mine are, let me look at my bit of paper here. Um, it's a 50 mil cylinder. The overall length is 60 mil. That's from there to there. The diameter of the recessed center is 29.5, you could um, probably make it 30, but I went 29.5, and it, it is um, extended out 6.5 mil. You've got a 5 mil uh, depression here in the flywheel, and then you've got some lettering here that numbers that you want to make sure you don't foul. So 6.5 is okay because you want it to pull up on the center, you don't want it pulling up on the, on the outside edge. I mean, you could. But centre's better, uh, that gets uh, everything uh, pulled up nice and square that way because um, there could be lettering and casting and stuff there. Okay, now the bolt, the bolt that I made, the length of that is 21.5 mil. But of course that will vary with the amount that you um, feed the, 
this end bit into your cylinder before you weld it. Uh, and I haven't uh, got a measurement on that, but basically you have to make it up to uh, whatever uh, length you do. So we'll put her on and uh, pull her up and uh, she'll be just about done. I'm putting a spring washer on this. It never had a spring washer originally, but I think it's a good idea. So I've made provision in the length of the uh, bolt for a spring washer. You can see that it's just sitting back from the end of the uh, of the pulley to allow for the spring washer. And then we put her on. Start it with our fingers. All right. Make sure that when you file your knots, you file it in the right direction because it'll be going this way. And then we just pull her up with the uh, with the socket. Now you'll see the, the rope will do its bit here, stopping the crankshaft from turning. And pull it up firm, you don't go crazy. Alright, that's plenty. So now we pull our, our rope out, ropes out, we're good to go. So. We'll put the spark plug back in, put the fuel tank back on, you've got to reconnect your fuel pipe, and theoretically it should go. Now on the end here I've left that open, I left the previous one I made open too so it gets good airflow and you know, okay something could get sucked in there I suppose, but what you could do is you could actually fit some mesh, some flywire or some sort of open mesh or even, you know, coarse coarse mesh uh, behind the, the housing here to just, and just leave a hole in it to stop anything getting sucked in but it's up to you um, and I suppose it is a good idea but uh, you can make that as good as you want but just pop rivet it you know through and uh, bronze it on whatever you want to do all right I'll put the plug in and we'll uh, put it back together right well she's all back together plugs in uh, now it's just a matter of put some fuel in it and see if she goes. Right, so back together, fuel in the tank, petrol's on, put it in the wrong position, bit of choke, put on the rope. We're using the original rope, which is in perfect condition because it's obviously hardly done any work, this thing. Wind the rope around a couple of times. Give her a pull. That. So there you have it folks, quick fix, she'll never give, that'll never give trouble again, and it's up to you whether you want to just close the, the fan with a bit of mesh on the inside or not, and uh, you can vary your pulley length whatever you want, as you can see that, that's just a nice length, get your rope on, so that's folks, that's it folks. Probably half a day's work to make it up. You really need a lathe to do it properly, but you could probably bodge it up without a lathe. But, uh, so if you've got a little Chinese lathe, yeah, right, these sort of jobs, those things can do dead easy and dead accurately. 10 bucks, not bad, eh? How yeah, can they do it? So, uh, there you go, uh, that's it for me. And uh, if you've got one of these little jiggers and uh, the pull start mechanism's crapped out, well, Easy fix. Okay. See you next time. Cheers.